I'm delighted that our first speaker is the Minister for Children and Young People, Cleo Jorge, um, MSP, and so the fairly new government minister for children and young people, but you all know Claire from her, the minister from her incredible work as the mental health minister. And she's represented the Rutherglen constituency since her election in 2016, where she was, she was born and raised there. She's a mental health nurse with over 30 years of experience. And for over half of that, she was specializing in perinatal mental health. And she helped set up Scotland's first mother and baby unit in Glasgow in 2004 as the clinical nurse manager. And since being an MSP and being a minister, she's shown incredible commitment to human rights generally, and particularly the human rights of children and young people, particularly in the early years, and the important role of supporting families as well. So it's an absolute delight to welcome you here today, Minister. I pass the floor to you. Thank you very much, uh, Bruce, for your very kind introduction. And it's a, a great pleasure to be opening this year's National Youth Justice Conference. I'm pleased that this is one of my first engagements following my appointment. And I do know that this is a, a well-established annual high point for the sector, sharing knowledge, building relationships, and taking courage and hope from one another. And I hope that you all get real value from a varied and exciting programme. Alas, last year's conference had to be cancelled due to the pandemic and you all missed out. So I'm delighted that this year's conference is able to go ahead, even if it is virtually. We will all have experienced hard times over the past year and your continued commitment to Scotland's young people has been needed more than ever. You will all know that the impact this pandemic has had on our children and young people has been profound. And this is especially the case for young people affected by trauma, poverty and adversity. The focus of this year's conference is on children's rights and that emphasis has never been more timely. I take the, the chance here to affirm my commitment to getting it right for children and young people, to delivering on the asks within the promise and to seeing Scotland's children benefit from the benefits of UNCRC Incorporation. I know that there have been significant achievements over the last decade. The cornerstone has been Scotland's successful whole system approach. Founding on that, we can and must be ambitious for the next period. Over the lifespan of the last two Scottish youth justice strategies, we've seen an 85% reduction in under 18s preceded against in court, 75% reduction in offence referrals to the children's reporter, and 93% reduction in under 18s in custody. But I'm already clear that there is more that we can do. And with that in mind, I'm delighted to announce today a new youth justice vision and priorities. That strategic document sets out a principled rights respecting platform to better support young people in conflict with the law, improve services to victims and further enhance work towards more positive outcomes more often for young people in trouble. That vision is given further expression in a focused annual action plan to deliver on the priorities. Our new vision puts in place a strong foundation developed in concert with key care and justice partners, including children and young people. Scotland's young people and their families and communities are going to be supported to deal with the causes as well as the effects of their behaviour. And we need to help them on their journey towards the positive destinations that we all want for them. Critically, the vision is deeply influenced by the promise and former CYCJ Director Claire Leiterer's outstanding rights respecting report from last year. The action plan is a live document. It will be actively reviewed at least quarterly, and that will be to respond to new matters as they arise or to intensify efforts where long-standing issues need extra attention. These key documents will help guide us as we seek to live up to the promises we've made to children and young people. The Independent Care Review published the promise in February last year and challenged us to redesign our youth justice system. The strategy published today is directly designed to set us on the road to meet that obligation. We can and must deliver transformational change to keep the promise on time and in full. 
The First Minister has committed the Scottish Government to work with all its energy and focus along with local authorities, care providers and all relevant stakeholders to make the changes needed. And the care review was one of the most substantial, ambitious and vital reviews in Scotland's devolved history. It delivered a powerful, simple message. Care must have love and nurture at its heart. To help us get there, we have taken three key early steps. Firstly, we will remain fully committed to creating a structure that can facilitate the redesign of the whole system approaches to care and support. This begins with embedding the commitments that have already been made to care experienced people into the policy and delivery with significant and intensive work across the entirety of government policy. Secondly, an oversight board has been established to hold us all to account. At least half of the board members have experience of care because we cannot build a new approach without having those with lived experience at its heart. And finally, we have supported the establishment of a dedicated independent non-statutory company, The Promise Scotland. They have a clear role to provide support and oversight to enable full implementation of the care review's conclusions. As you will be aware, the Scottish Parliament unanimously passed the United Nations Conventions on the Rights of the Child in Corporation Scotland Bill. This landmark legislation that will see one of the biggest shifts in power since devolution, but not a shift across physical borders. This shift is towards children as rights holders. And this is a major step towards Scotland becoming the best place in the world to grow up. I understand that, Bruce, you have called the incorporation of the UNCRC into Scots law the most important thing that we can do to protect and uphold the rights of children and young people. I agree. This bill will deliver a fundamental shift in the way children's rights are respected, protected and fulfilled in Scotland. And I now urge all organisations with a duty to children to ensure that they are compliant. Please let us know if we can support you in any way. And good progress is being made in relation to implementation of the Age of Criminal Responsibility Act. Since November 2019, it has been possible to refer a child under 12 to a children's hearing only on welfare and protection grounds. And that means it's not been possible since for children under 12 to obtain criminal convictions. Last November, we brought into force the protections regarding the disclosure of information relating to behaviour which happened when a child was under the age of 12. And the remaining provisions will be commenced this autumn. Meanwhile, the National Advisory Group on Age of Criminal Responsibility, again enhanced by the membership of care experienced young people, continues to look at the issues around further progressive changes in that area. And I expect advice from that group on the implementation for a move to age 14 by the end of this year. And they will continue to consider and then advise on further progressive changes between now and 2024. So this is an important moment, a fresh start with a challenging agenda. But we have lots going for us too, an engaged and effective workforce, a clear vision and a promise to keep. I look forward to working with you all to secure more success. There are some great speakers and workshops lined up for you today and tomorrow morning. I hope that you find them informative and that you have an enjoyable conference. Thank you. Thank you so much, Minister. That was an amazing start to what is going to be a, a fantastic conference and warmly welcoming the vision priorities and, and action plan that you've just launched and will be available to, to people. It really is an exciting time to be doing this, this work in Scotland. Um, we have done a lot of work identifying how we can improve and it's amazing now to see some of that on paper and moving forward, building on, on the real strengths that we have in Scotland and, and the progress that we've made. So thank you so much for, for being here and launching that here today. And it's gonna be very exciting for all of us to be working together to deliver on all of those commitments. And then the building on the work of the promise, putting children, young people's voices and experiences right at the heart of that work, I think really shows incredible human rights leadership. And um, it's, it's, it's very exciting. And, and, I'm, and I know that we're gonna spend the next couple of days very much focusing on, on, on what, you've, what you've started with Minister 
and the next weeks, months and, and years really making it a, a reality. So thank you so, so much.